Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Is to illustrate the use of bonding technology for partial denture abutment teeth. Both enamel recontouring and the addition of posterior composites to modify the contours of the natural teeth will be demonstrated as a conservative and possibly lower cost alternative to crowns, which often remain the treatment of choice. The patient is examined for functional and aesthetic concerns. It was decided during the examination to replace both the upper denture and the unsatisfactory lower partial denture. The present partial denture has led to deterioration of periodontal support of the abutment teeth and has been uncomfortable for the patient. Tooth number 27 is lost and tooth number 26 has extensive periodontal involvement as determined by radiographic examination and will therefore be extracted. The patient expressed the desire to keep her natural teeth which presents the clinician with a difficult prosthetic situation. Due to the unfavorable remaining support, composite recontouring will be used to balance the forces between the few remaining teeth and the less than ideal residual ridge. Diagnostic casts are examined on the surveyor to analyze the contours. The mesial lingual of tooth number 21 gives a suitable guideline and will be left intact. The distal buccal undercut on tooth number 21 is undesirable for clasp placement and will be reduced. The mesial buccal of tooth number 21 lacks sufficient undercut for retention. The retention will be increased with composite. The corroded amalgam will be replaced as part of this procedure. A mesial occlusal rest will be placed in the natural tooth structure of tooth number 21. The linguals of teeth 23, 24, and 25 have no suitable occlusal rests and have short lingual guide planes, especially the primary abutment tooth number 25. All three teeth will be treated together by placing raised cingulum rests and lingual guide planes to gain support from all three teeth. In addition, the height of contour on the buccal surface of tooth 25 will be lowered. The distal of tooth number 25 at the incisal will be reduced for aesthetic purposes due to replacing tooth number 26 with the proposed line of draw of the partial denture. Numbers 22, 23, and 24 will be modified on the labial for aesthetic reasons and the incisal edges of 23, 24, and 25 will be reduced for patient comfort. This then is our proposed treatment plan for this particular patient. There are four areas of enamel contouring and eight areas of composite bonding, five for aesthetic and functional needs of the partial denture and three areas for aesthetics only. Using a duplicate cast and red blockout wax, an ideal wax up for the patient is developed. Only five areas are examined in detail for primary prosthodontic concerns. An addition to the buckle of tooth number 25 is made, and the mesial buckle of number 21, and lingual additions to 23, 24, and 25 for raised cingulum rest with lengthened guidelines. A duplicate cast is made of the ideal wax up using reversible or irreversible hydrocolloid and the contours are checked on the surveyor to verify that the information has been transferred accurately. At this point the use of two types of matrices will be demonstrated. We will concentrate on the use of the vacuum formed matrix on the buckle of number 21 in the first section and in the second section we will illustrate the light cured matrix on the linguals of 23, 24, and 25. Later, we'll demonstrate their clinical applications. A relatively thick thermoplastic sheet of surgical splint material is used to make the matrix. This rigid material thins down when it vacuum forms, 
In order to maintain rigidity and enable the clinician to transfer information accurately to the mouth, this rigidity is required. As the material heats, it begins to sag. When the sag reaches two to three inches, it is pulled down on the cast and adapted accurately for optimum surface detail. Since the material will lock on the cast, thin separating discs are used to separate the matrix in half by cutting across the occlusal and incisal. This will allow proper access to the buckle half. The matrix is then trimmed with sand discs and burrs. Properly trimmed, the matrix will allow the use of an explorer to remove excess composite. This will result in a more predictable contour and will minimize finishing time. The matrix is checked for accuracy and verified on the cast. In forming the light cured matrix, the cast is lightly coated with Vaseline. This will help ensure removal of the matrix after light curing. Any excess Vaseline is removed. A thin layer of occlusal matrix material is placed and adapted well. Using the largest diameter light curing wand available, the material is cured for 30 seconds per area. For ease of handling and rigidity, a second layer of matrix material is added and cured for 60 seconds per area. The matrix is teased off the cast and checked for accuracy. If voids are present, material may be added at this point and cured back on the model. This view shows the sharp detail produced inside the matrix. The matrix is then checked on the cast for accuracy and proper seating. The teeth have been scaled and polished and the composite color has been selected. For the most predictable result and optimum adhesion, a rubber dam is an essential part of this technique. A cervical clamp has been placed to gain access to the deep margin of the existing leaking amalgam restoration on tooth number 21. The vacuum formed matrix is tried in the mouth and tested for accuracy to ensure that it fully seats with the rubber dam in place. After the amalgam and recurrent caries are removed, glass ionomer liner is placed and the enamel is beveled at the incisal. For better bonding, the surface of all enamel to be bonded to is slightly roughened with a diamond since enamel under the surface has less fluoride content and better rod configuration. After the enamel has been etched for 60 seconds and the glass ionomer for 15 seconds and thoroughly rinsed and dried, a frosty appearance is noted on the enamel and glass ionomer. A dentinal bonding agent is applied and thinned with air and cured for 15 seconds. Because of the thickness of this restoration, composite is placed in layers to minimize shrinkage away from the margins. No alcohol or solvent should be added to the contouring instruments to handle the new generation of posterior composites. Contaminants will affect the physical properties of the restorative material and will weaken the final restoration. And the new generation of posterior composites with better handling characteristics may be handled without them by adapting the composite toward the margin. The first layer is cured for 30 seconds. Slightly overfill the matrix with composite material to help ensure against voids. A second layer of composite is added directly to the first layer. A good bond will result when the air inhibited surface of the first layer remains undisturbed. The material is adapted with a plastic instrument. The matrix is placed and seated properly. Before curing, it is important to remove all flash or excess material. This will minimize finishing time. Then the second layer is cured for 60 seconds. 
Note that these materials cannot be overcured. Undercuring, on the other hand, will result in less than ideal physical properties and may result in restoration failure. A spoon excavator is used to remove the matrix. The surface of the composite is hard with no air inhibited layer present. A 7901 burr is used to remove the minimal cervical flash. The restoration is complete except for minor finishing. The light cured matrix is tried in on the linguals of teeth number 23, 24, and 25. The composite on the linguals of these teeth will be placed and cured in one layer. The cervical clamp has been removed to make sure it seats fully and adapts well to the tooth surfaces. The enamel surface is roughened up slightly with a diamond for better adhesion. No glass ionomer is placed since the restoration does not involve dentin. As in the class 5, the surfaces will be etched, rinsed, two layers of dentinal bonding agent placed, and thinned with air and then cured. The light cured matrix is lightly coated with Vaseline to prevent sticking of composite to the matrix material. The composite material is then placed in the matrix and fully adapted to the linguals of teeth 23, 24, and 25. An explorer is used to remove the excess material at the incisals and interproximals. The material is cured first from the buckle for 30 seconds while the matrix is held in place from the lingual. Then cured from the lingual for 60 seconds in each area. The matrix is removed and the finishing procedures are begun. Finishing strips are used to polish the interproximal areas. If the teeth are splinted together unintentionally, a 7901 burr may be used to open the incisal edges. If necessary, the use of wedges will sometimes open the contacts for finishing. Lightening strips used with care may be used to cut through composite to open the interproximal areas. For final polishing, finishing strips are used with 30 fluted burrs and discs as access permits and surface detail is desired. The interproximal should be easy to floss. Check for overhangs or roughness which can trap plaque. The restorations are smooth and access is good for oral hygiene. Use a round diamond to place the mesial occlusal rest on tooth number 21 for stability of the partial denture. Recontouring of the distal buckle of tooth number 21 is necessary to remove the excessive undercut which would interfere with the clasp placement. This is accomplished with a diamond. A disc is then used to polish the distal buckle. An alginate impression is taken to verify the contour and the model is surveyed. If further contouring is necessary, it is done prior to the taking of the master cast impression. On a subsequent visit, you can see the good tissue reaction. After extraction of tooth number 26, tooth number 25 is reduced at the very distal at the incisal as seen from the pencil outline. The irregular incisal edges are reduced with a diamond and discs. This is done at the patient's request for her comfort. After all additions and modifications are made, alginate impressions are taken to be sure the desired result has been achieved. A custom tray will be made from this model for the master cast impression. The clinical results show the patient with a full upper denture and a lower partial. This case has employed the use of eight areas for composite addition. The technique is equally useful for addition of a small single area for prosthetic modification to all surfaces in the form of a full composite crown. 
You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.